I went to Mexico and I'm going to show you how to save big money on prescriptions, eyeglasses, and dental work. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. Oh my goodness, I have an exciting video for you today. You probably know I'm a full-time RVer. I've been traveling the country for the last four years and I'm on a mission to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for helping me with that goal. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some do's and don'ts of traveling to Mexico. What to take with you, what to leave behind. Now I'm gonna be focusing on walking across the border from Arizona, but a lot of these tips will apply to other parts of Mexico. Now why, as a full-time RVer, would you wanna to go to Mexico? Well, most of us in the winter are down here in warm areas. So there's a lot of RVers in Arizona, Texas, California, and there are three reasons that we go. Number one is prescriptions because actually most medications that you need a prescription for here in the US are over the counter in Mexico. So you can walk in and get the medications you need. Another reason is cheap dental work. Oh my gosh, you can get your teeth cleaned, get those things taken care of and save big money. And to get eye care, to get contacts or glasses. So the two towns in Arizona where I have crossed the border are Los Algodones, which is about 30 minutes from Yuma, and Nogales, which is about an hour, a little bit more than an hour from Tucson. I've been over to Los Algodones at least six times and I've crossed the border into Nogales twice. So let's talk about the kind of medications you can expect to find when you walk into a pharmacy. I don't think you'll be finding morphine or hydrocodone, that kind of things, but you will find the popular medicines that are in the U.S. that you have to have a prescription for, like blood pressure medicine or thyroid. I bought a bottle of amoxicillin. Just, I feel it's important as a full-time RVer to have it on board with me. Before we go any further, I wanna take a break and talk about why I'm in a hotel room. You're used to seeing me in my motorhome every week. Well, sometimes in RV life, it's easier to just take the car and take a little road trip versus taking the motor home. So right now I'm in Yuma, close to Los Algodones, and I wanna thank Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video because guess what? Last night I did not sleep on my Brooklyn Bedding mattress and I missed it. Now you may remember when I had my fifth wheel, I had an RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I left it behind when I got the motorhome. So here's the thing, when you buy an RV, even if you spend $400,000 for a motorhome, you will most likely still have to buy a mattress. They just put these horrible things in there and call them mattresses and that's generally the first upgrade you make. I was waking up sore, my neck was sore, my shoulders were sore, so I got got another Brooklyn bedding mattress and I'm sleeping really well again. They have king short and queen short, but not only that, they send the mattress directly to you and it's free shipping. They have a 120 night sleep guarantee and a 10 year warranty. I love that I got the mattress delivered to my campground, but I do wanna warn you, they can be heavy. My mattress weighs 100 pounds. I have the Aurora Lux. So it likely will take a couple people to carry it into your camper. Now, once you have it inside, do not open it up in your living area. You need to open it up in the bedroom on your bed platform because it puffs up. One of the things I didn't know until I got my Brooklyn bedding mattress is that I was sleeping my whole adult life on the wrong firmness. So be sure to check with them to get the right firmness for you and don't pay full price. I can give you 25% off. Just go to rvmattress.com slash Liz Amazing and use the Liz Amazing code to save 25% off a Brooklyn bedding mattress. Dental work is another reason to go to Mexico. Almost everyone that I camp with that are full-time RVers, they know that they're gonna head over to Mexico and get their teeth cleaned. They spend $50 or even less than that to get that done. But also, these are professional dental offices. They're clean. I feel very comfortable. I have had this done probably three times, maybe more. They also will do root canals, veneers, deep cleans, cavity fills. 
and so much cheaper. I think you can get a root canal done for $300 or maybe $600. I had a root canal done in Vegas and it was $3,000. So there's huge savings. Getting eyeglasses or contacts is another great reason to cross the border into Mexico. In Nogales, which is the town near Tucson, I did not see any eyeglass stores, but there's at least three in Los Algodones. Remember, they're there to serve you, the American tourists, so they get it done quick. You don't have to come back. You just wait maybe an hour or two and they'll have it all for you. Now, of course, it depends on what you pick and what you have done. But as far as a price example, you can get frames, progressive lenses, which are the kind without the line, you know, the bifocal without the line, transitions, which are the lenses that get dark in the sun. You can get all that for about $200. So it's an unbelievable deal. If you're going to Los Algodones, then you'll likely be coming from Yuma, Arizona on Interstate 8. I want to let you know that I wrote all the details in the description so you don't have to write this down while you're watching. So you'll cross barely into California where you'll take exit 166. You will park and walk across the border, but there's a specific parking lot for getting into Mexico. Now getting there is a little tricky, which is why I made this video. It is about a mile and three quarters, give or take, to get to the parking once you leave the interstate. And some things to know. Try to go on a weekday where it will be less busy. The border crossing hours are from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. I suggest you arrive early to avoid crowds. Los Algodones is supposed to be on Pacific time, California time, but all the stores that we went into actually are on Yuma time which is mountain time. To find the parking lot, look for the last U-turn sign. The parking fee is $6 cash and it is big rig friendly. I drove my truck, but it may be more if you bring your camper. It is a breeze to get in and park. So you just walk across the border, but it's not far. This is Mexico on the other side of the fence. Carry with you your cash, passport, a water bottle, your current prescription bottles so the drug clerks can match them. Now I have crossed into the border at Los Alcadonas at least six times and each time there has not been anyone to greet me. There's no one to check and make sure that I have my passport. That means no one to remind you that you need your passport to get back out. Or if you're one of the five states that has the enhanced driver's license, you will know if you're in one of those states and if you happen to have one of them. If you bring a dog, make sure its rabies vaccine is up to date and you will need a health certificate. You do not want to bring guns with you across. That is not allowed. To get to Nogales, Mexico from Tucson, take Interstate 19 South until you see the border signs. Take the first left after this sign to get into the Burger King parking lot. You'll pay just $5 to park all day. Or you can keep going straight to park at the lots directly across from Burger King, but that's $2 an hour. Either way, you'll walk through the lot to get to Mexico. The border is across the street behind the lot. Nogales is smaller than Los Algodones, but the border crossing seemed fancier. Expect to be greeted by several people wanting to help you find a dentist or a pharmacy or eyeglasses. This is neither good or bad. I have used their help. If you walk one or two blocks further into Mexico, the prices get cheaper, but the selection goes down. <laughs> There's definitely a carnival atmosphere going on in the town of Los Algodones. In addition to dental, pharmacy, and eyewear services, you will see plenty of street vendors and stores, all trying to sell their wares to the Americans. U.S. allows you to bring back one year's supply of medications. When you walk back across, customs will ask you what you bought. Be sure you say medications, not drugs.
I found that the lines to come back across the border start forming around noon and are particularly bad around three o'clock. The most I've ever waited has been 30 minutes, but I have heard of the wait being an hour. When you're buying stuff, they do accept cash and credit cards, but be prepared for some places ringing you up in pesos. So it might be a bit of a shock. Yeah, where, do it, where does it say pesos? It looks like $570 to me. Pesos. Where, show me where. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And let me know if you would think about going over to Mexico or if you've gone to Mexico. I'd love to hear your stories. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.